When taking a look at the artery system of the cow, we'll see a lot of differences right away. We're going to start with the heart and work our way up toward the head. One of the biggest differences we'll notice is instead of the one vein that comes off of the heart of the superior vena cava, we'll actually find two arteries. So this leads to a difference in how we name things. First of all, we see the larger vessel right here. This is going to go up and specialize into the right side of the right arm as well as both sides of the head. This one on this side goes immediately to the left arm. So we'll call this, what, what it will do is it will go underneath the clavicle on the left side. So this is the left subclavian. Subclavian because sub means below, clavian refers to the clavicle itself. Because this larger vessel will ultimately specialize into the arm as well as the head, we'll call this the brachiocephalic. Now remember on the veins, what we saw is that it would make a split into a right and left vessels that would be your brachiocephalics, but we'll only see one on the artery, so keep that in mind as you're naming. Now if I pull these veins out of the way, you'll see that this subclavian or this brachiocephalic right here will specialize into the left arm or excuse me, the right arm. This would be the right subclavian, the right common carotid. And the reason we call it common carotid is because it will ultimately, when it goes up to the head, separate into external and internal carotids. It'll go into the left common carotid. Now again, to review, we've got the left subclavian as well. Now, when we get to these uh, subclavians and so on, we're going to ha have to be careful because we need to see some divisions as they break off or branch off. The first of these divisions going downward, okay, working their way posteriorly, is going to be right here. Now these will always be cut off because we cut away the, uh, the ribs and the pectoral muscles. The first one going down that we'll encounter is the internal mammary artery. Okay, we do have an internal mammary vein as well. The second one is a little bit finer and it's going to be a real long one. It's right here. This is the long thoracic artery. So the, the two going down are going to be the internal mammary as well as the long thoracic. We've got the same on the right side. Now, when we get up to the top parts, the ones that are going to work their way up to the top of the cat or work their way superiorly, we're going to have a division here. These are always tricky to find because they're so small. The first one is right in here, and that first one is called the vertebral. The second one is right here, and it usually sits right on top of that clavicle. In fact, it sits right here. And that second one is called the costal cervical. The third one is right here, and this one's called the thyrocervical. So it goes in order of vertebral, costal cervical, thyrocervical. Now the reason that's important to keep in mind is because we're going to be seeing some uh, some divisions off of there and we need to be able to identify those as landmarks so we can name some subsequent ones. The next one that's going to be named is this artery right here. Now if you follow where that artery goes, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the exact same places as the veins go. So if you can find where the vein is, usually I find the vein is actually easier to identify than the artery. If you can identify where the vein goes, the artery is going to have the same name. So since this one ties up with the transverse scapular vein, this is the transverse scapular artery. So vertebral, costal cervical, thyrocervical, then it's going to be the transverse scapular. Okay. Now as we go down, we'll see the subscapular vein right here. So if we find the artery underneath that goes to the exact same spot, here it is. Here's your subscapular artery right here Okay, as it branches off. What that means for us is that this was all subclavian up until that point. Now the next task is to find, and basically we define all of these things the same way as we're going to be defining the the veins themselves. So the next task we need to do is we need to find where that anterior humeral circumflex is. Now that artery is a little bit trickier to find. Again, I look for where the vein was. 
So if here's the vein, the artery is going to be right underneath. Here's the circumflex. So basically what that means for us is that the, the artery from here to here is going to be called the axillary. After that circumflex, we're going to find that the axillary will become a brachial. And that will follow just like if I slide over to the cat's right. This was developed a little bit better uh, for the vein, and the same holds true for the artery. Here is your circumflex right here. So that means after that point, this is all brachial, and it'll specialize into the pinky side as well as thumb side. So this is going to be the ulnar as well as the radial.